Ephesians 1.14 The Holy Spirit is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. You were made for so much more. Do you believe that? We've been walking through the book of Ephesians one verse per day uh, during these days of social quarantine. And just this past week, if I'm honest, uh, I finally started to crack just a, just a little bit, but, but crack nonetheless. M my mind keeps going to the, the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, where Moses sets God's people free from bondage to a cruel leader in Egypt. And yet, if you're familiar with that story at all, I'm haunted most by a verse we encounter later while they wander in the wilderness. In chapter 16, verse 3, it says there, The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt when we sat by pots of meat and ate all the bread we wanted. Instead, you brought us into this wilderness to make this whole assembly die of hunger. They grumble against Moses. They, they think that it would have been better if we were slaves in Egypt than if we were wandering here in the unknown wilderness. The tragedy of, of God's people, they think it would only be better if we went back to slavery because it is, after all, something familiar. But, but God, he, he's with them, leading them into something better. We're not unlike them. Do, do you recognize that we will settle for the cruel masters that we know rather than venture into pleasures that are unfamiliar. I found that that most timeless messages that have ever been preached by people tend tend to not be those that are that are speaking to current issues. Uh, for example, one of my heroes, Charles Spurgeon, he did occasionally address cultural events, but those tend to be his least known messages. Against that backdrop, let me speak a little bit about the current cultural situation that we find ourselves in during this coronavirus. Again, you were, you were made for so much more, but, but do you believe that? We come to, to verse 14 in Ephesians chapter 1. There it says that the Holy Spirit is the down payment of our inheritance. Uh, the down payment, like, like purchasing a house. If I were to share uh, some of my wife and Mai's journey towards homeownership, it was a challenging one, to say the least. Uh, we found a, a great neighborhood, uh, a great house rather, not far away in the same neighborhood we're in now, just a few blocks up the road, probably about 10 years ago. And we made a down payment on it. Uh, we put $1,000 down to save that. And uh, it was a sale by owner. Uh, it, there, we weren't working through a we weren't working through a realtor. And then at the, at the last minute, we found out that the, the roof was actually in disrepair and he wasn't willing to repair it. And we, he wouldn't take an offer that was lower and that fell through and we lost our down payment, unfortunately. And then fast forward uh, about five more years, we were going to buy a house over in Sheridan Hill and uh, we'd, we'd place some money in that. And then due to our own circumstance, I, I was called to pastor a church down in Maryland and we backed out and again, lost our down payment on that house. Finally, we entered into the joys of home ownership down in Maryland and, uh, and now another home back up here in Albany. The down payment that Paul is talking about here, the Holy Spirit, much different. There's no backing out of this. God gives this down payment to us in the form of the Holy Spirit to assure us of our salvation. Have you ever wondered that question? How, how can I know I'm saved? Or maybe you've read, perhaps you think of this scripture, all sins will be forgiven except for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You encounter that in the Gospels. That'll rock the best of Christians if they read it. They wonder, have I perhaps blasphemed the Holy Spirit and now I've, I've shipwrecked my faith? I, I cannot be uh, saved because I've done that. Now, uh, to encourage you pastorally, I would say the people that are blaspheming the Holy Spirit, it's a complicated thing to know what that means, but if you're if you're scared or sensitive about that, it's a good chance you've probably not done it because blasphemy the Holy Spirit, as I understand it, is continually hardening your heart against God and saying, no, God, not your will, but my will is how I understand that to mean blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But in terms of 
the the big doctrine word is called assurance. How can you know for sure? How can you have assurance that you are in fact saved? Well, it's from the Holy Spirit. God gives you that as a promise, as a down payment for the Christian life is is a, a long obedience in the same direction, some have said. It's striving towards a renewed relationship with God. Now, Jesus Christ on the cross died to pay that full way. We don't have to work to do it, but our whole life we are trying to, to get into communion with God. Uh, if you if you look at the, the big story of the Bible, you look back, Adam and Eve sin in a garden, but before that sin, they had unhindered relationship with God. Since then, all of our relationships have had sin enter them. They've been broken, but but because of Jesus, we are able to restore that communion. Uh, one day we will see him face to face. We will no longer wonder. We will, there will be no more mystery. When the perfect comes, all of the imperfect will pass away. So I love that that verse. from It's from Paul's other letter to the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians 13. He says, uh, when the perfect comes, the imperfect shall pass away. All of the most amazing glimpses of God we get on this, this earth are are mere shadows until we see him face to face and we know him uh, in an intimate way. But because we live in a fallen world, we long for that, but we have this down payment. The Holy Spirit takes residence within his people. Uh, we are we are the essential, we are the temple that we had in the Old Testament. There was the temple that was where God's spirit dwelled. And in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, we have, we are that temple because God actually takes up residence and dwells within us. He's the down payment and he won't back out of that. So you'll, you'll have assurance that you are his because of that Holy Spirit, you will know. Again, like a down payment on a house, except it's a, in an irreversible contract. But we're not meant to settle down for good. As a, some of the greatest times that I've had with my family is around the dinner table. But even that is only a shadow of, of greater things to come. We're, we're finding that now during this time of social quarantine. Have the four walls of your home started to collapse in on you? As, as great as our homes are to have a, a place to rest our head, that's not our final resting place. Jesus' promise was to, to give his people rest, to usher them into that, into peace, shalom. And that's where we're heading. Abraham in the Old Testament, Moses, they were looking for this promised land, this city that was without a builder, without a man-made builder that was made by God himself. That's where we're aiming. The, the greatest place that we can find peace in this earth, even that is, is just a shadow of what is to come. That down payment we have of the Holy Spirit, that's great to have that communion with God, but we're aiming towards uh, unhindered face-to-face -face relationship with him. Do you long for that? What does it mean that God has given us the Holy Spirit? It's in Exodus, it was like them having that, that pillar of fire, that cloud leading them. Yet, tragically, they wanted to return back to other ways, cruel taskmasters. My hope, my prayer for us as people is that during this time, we wouldn't, we wouldn't look for uh, cruel taskmasters, that we wouldn't numb ourselves with television, with entertainment, but that we would find deep communion with God and even with each other via uh, digital means during this time because I believe God is leading us into something better. He wants us, he wants to give us a glimpse of that promised land. We weren't meant to wander in the wilderness. We weren't meant to be shut up in isolation in our homes, but God uh, has allowed these things to happen to help us see our greater need for him, our greater need for communion with him and with his people in an unhindered way. We've taught our kids uh, when they've observed some of the cruelty of the world that one day the world will be kind again. And I'll tell you that uh, nothing will break the heart of a father more than to hear his three-year-old little girl say, when will we see our grandma again? When will we see, dad, will we see grandma when the world is kind again? And you can answer yes, yes, child, someday we will see her again. How, how do you know? It, it's because we have been given a down payment. It is the first of a great inheritance. That's what Paul is hinting at here, Ephesians 1.14. But what is an inheritance? It's something that someone leaves for you upon their death. Who had to die in order for you to receive an inheritance? It was no one less than the very Son of God, the same one that was present during creation itself. How do you know you are saved? You have the Spirit within you if you've trusted in Christ, if you've believed that gospel message that he who knew no sin became sin so that you could inherit the righteousness of God. He who was with God the Father at the very beginning of creation when the, the earth was void and without form, he 
came to live a sinless life, to die on a cross for us. We're coming into today's Palm Sunday. We're coming into Passion Week here, where we observe the last days of Jesus's earthly life. Enter into that. God had to send his child, his son, his only son, to die in order to bring you into relationship with you, in order to restore that relationship. How great of a love does he have for you that he would be willing to sacrifice him for you? How do you know you are saved? You have the spirit within you if you've trusted in Christ. Romans 8.16, one of Paul's uh, other letters in Romans 8.16, he says, The spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are children of God. You know you're a child of God because the spirit in him, the spirit of God in you will testify to your spirit. You'll know I'm a child of God. Uh, a friend of mine who coincidentally is actually working to buy his first house in the midst of all this craziness, you could pray for him, uh, is fond of saying, I don't know if anyone's saved, but I know that I am. And I like that. While I'm rather certain that a lot of people that I know, a lot of people in our community are saved, they have trusted and called on Christ, right? That's, that's why in church pastors baptize people to affirm that they've trusted in Christ, that they believe their profession is genuine, that they truly believe in him. But on the other hand, uh, some of us talked about this today in community. We can never be sure. I've seen people that I was rather sure were Christians walk away from the faith. I've seen others that claim to be Christians reveal hidden secrets that were so so wretched that it betrayed their entire life of Christian their Christian walk, that they in fact were not of the Lord because of the things they were doing were so out of character for what a Christian could be known for. So let me ask you, do you have that spirit? Are you confident that you know Jesus? Have you received that down payment of the inheritance? How are you holding up during this pandemic? Are, are you without hope? You weren't meant to be isolated, yet God is allowing these events to pass. Will you receive this from him? Because you were meant for something more. God gives you a first taste of that by giving you him, giving you his very self. He gave Christ on the cross for you, and then he gives you the Holy Spirit if you believe in him. You can know his very presence. You may be alone physically, but, but you are not alone. God loves you. He sent his, his spirit to show you that. Start pressing into that inheritance. Don't, don't squander these days of isolation and quarantine, but use them to commune with God. Ultimately, that is what heaven will be anyway.